Hello, this is Alejandro with GSC, and today's topic is three ways of using in context references in an assembly. In context modeling, or what is also referred to as top down modeling, can be a powerful workflow by allowing users to reference geometry and other components in an assembly. This allows users to create new sketches, features, or components. In today's example, we create in context sketches to modify components and to create edge lines. On my screen here, you can see that I have a weldment structure that is made up of three different components. I have a base plate, a cylinder, and some gussets. And in order to help my welders correctly position each component, I want to create sketches for my etch lines. So each one of these components, my cylinder will have an edge line on this base plate, and my gussets will also um, have edge lines for their position on the cylinder. Also, if you take a look inside the cylinder, you'll see that my gussets are actually interfering with my cylinder. So we're actually going to leverage uh, geometry from our cylinder to contour our gussets in order to allow the welders to perfectly mate them to the cylinder. So we'll begin by creating a sketch of my cylinder onto my base plate. All my sketches to exist only in my base plate part so that I can reference it later on, for example, in my drawing. I can accomplish this by editing the base plate from the subly feature tree. I can then create a sketch on my top face of my base plate, and then I could select the outer boundary of my cylinder and use the Convert Entities command. If I exit Edit Part Mode, and open up just my base plate, you'll see that now I have this sketch that exists in my base plate part. And here you also notice that I have this little arrow symbol next to my new sketch, and that simply means that it's referencing uh, an external file, or, or for in this case, my assembly file or my part component. If I create a drawing for my base plate, you'll also notice that my reference sketch is also included. And I can reference it or even add annotations however I please. Next, we're going to edit our gusset by using in context modeling to remove the interference with the cylinder as well as contour the gusset so that it perfectly mates up to the cylinder. So, once again, we're going to edit our gusset from the assembly tree by selecting edit part. I'm actually going to use 3D Sketch. Kind of the advantage of 3D Sketch is that I don't have to define a play in order to create a sketch. So I'm going to select the outer outline of my cylinder and I'm going to use the Convert Entities command. And here you can see that my sketch geometry was created. If I open up my gusset, by itself, you'll see that now I have this sketch that exists in my part file. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this sketch to perform an extrude cut. And since I used a 3D sketch to define or create this geometry, I'm going to have to define 
a cut direction. So I'll select this edge and I'll select through all for my parameter. Now here you can see that our gusset has been perfectly contoured to fit our outer cylinder shape. If we jump back into our assembly and rebuild, you'll see that all of my gussets are now have now been modified and will be will make perfectly to the outer edge or outer face of my cylinder. I could even run an interference check just to make sure that my gussets and my cylinder aren't interfering. The final portion of this video, we're going to create etch lines for the location of our gussets on our cylinder. So once again, uh, these etch lines are going to exist in our cylinder, so we're going to edit the cylinder part by selecting it from the assembly feature tree. This time we're going to leverage an awesome tool called Intersection Curve. We already create the edge lines for our gusset. Intersection Curve will create intersection lines between two solid bodies or between surfaces or between a solid body and a surface. In this case, we want to select two solid bo uh, several solid bodies. First, our cylinder, and then our gussets. And once I hit OK, you'll see that now the interference edge lines are created. If I open up the cylinder part by itself in a separate window, you'll see that my edge lines also exist in my cylinder part model. And if I want to make a drawing of my cylinder, you'll see that once again, these, uh, these edge lines will show up and I can annotate them or reference them any which way I want. So that's how you utilize in context references in an assembly to help speed up designs. Once again, this is Alejandro with GSC. Thanks for watching.